Hey everyone, welcome back to another Reborn Review. Today we're taking a look at Leica the Sarkasukas. Now it's very rare that I review non-dinosaur figures on the channel. That's because I devote most of my collection uh, to picking up you know, the newest dinosaur toys out there. But every once in a while, something comes around that piques my interest. And this Sarkasukas just looked so good in the promotional images. I couldn't pass this thing up and I'm so happy I got this thing. It's a really, really impressive figure, which we'll see very, very shortly. Now I end up pre-ordering this figure from Big Bad Toy Store. It's now in stock. It retails for $60. I'll leave a link down below in the description if you want to pick one up for yourself. So let's just go over the packaging really quick before we take a closer look at this really impressive figure. It is a deluxe pack. It actually comes with a juvenile uh, Nigrosaurus. This is the river version. That's the color that really stuck out to me and it's spinning around on the back of the box. We do have the lake version of the Sarko and they did do a Dinosuchus and now that I have the Sarko in hand, I am definitely going to pick up their Dinosuchus because it's such an impressive figure. And here is the Sarkasuchus, uh, the packaging. And all I have to say is, wow, this thing is badass. Love or hate Rebore, there's no denying. They put out such a high quality product for the price you pay, Neil. This is a very big figure. It's 60 bucks, but just the paint job on it is something you'd see on like a premium high-end statue that costs like a couple hundred dollars. They really are just top-notch with their paint jobs and it's gotten so much better sculpting their figures over the air. And yeah, I absolutely love this Sarkasuka. It's an absolutely massive figure. So uh, when we get to the scale, there's some issues with the scale, but damn, this thing is absolutely impressive. And I love the baby Nigrosaurus uh, prey that just gets held in its mouth. It really just adds so much character to this amazing looking figure. And I absolutely love the uh, river paint job on here it's just so lifelike and natural looking this thing is just absolutely so impressive i just love the sheen on it it gives it that nice wet look like this thing just sprung from the water all around just super super impressed with this figure now time for some measurements this figure is 17 and a quarter inches from the tip of the tail to the tip of that snout or 43.8 centimeters and just about two inches tall to the top of the head or just over five centimeters so Sarkasukas in real life was 29 and a half feet to 31.2 feet long or nine to nine and a half meters. So I'll put this figure somewhere in the 120 to the 122 scale range. So it's not the 135 scale that is advertised on the front of the packaging, which can be very deceiving because a lot of people collect the 135 scale. And when you get this thing in, it's a absolutely massive figure. Um, the scale really doesn't bother me that much. It's gonna look great on my shelf and I'll just consider this big brute like a really, really old Sarkasukas that achieved a uh, humongous length over time from being the apex predator and survive. But you know, but if you look at 135 scale, uh, you got the uh, Safari one out there that should be able to you know, fit into your collection. And now let's zoom and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure. Starting with this absolutely amazing head sculpt. This figure is just so packed full of life. The paint job is absolutely outstanding on here. Uh, you know, on the front right here of the Sarkasukas, we do have this region of the nose called a bola. It's like basically kind of like a bony, you know, bulbous growth at the end of this. You know, with the mouth, let's get the camera to focus in and all that. With the mouth closed, completely flush, it kind of gives it kind of an overbite. And, you know, we see, you know, the bola on modern uh, crocodiles like the uh, gharial. So, yeah, really, really nicely done. Just like, just the paint apps on here and that glossy sheen really absolutely make this thing pop and let's take a zoom in on those very tiny eyes on top of the head you got that nice crocodile looking slit for the eyes the teeth are all nicely done and the articulation is at the top of the head right here very similar to the papo uh what's it called crapasuchus I, I'm, I'm mixing it up right now but yeah i love this detail right here this is a bony palette uh this you know goes down to close off the throat so the animal can breathe with its nostrils above the water it's a really really nice attention to detail and let's take a look at the top of the jaw very very nice detail right here the teeth are all nicely done that semi-translucent uh, plastic is a very very lifelike look and then turn the figure over we have some nice cream uh, coat underside in here with all those nice looking crocodile scales all the way down uh, you even got some like pock marks on some of the scales very very cool and then looking at the top of the head just the details on this thing are just absolutely astounding my camera does not like it for whatever reason because it's just too glossy so it keeps going in and out of focus but you have this nice 
light brown coloration mixed in with all this dark brown and all these dark black markings all along the side of the figure. Take a look at the front arms. Nicely done. Just the scale work on here is great. You know, sometimes, you know, in the past, Rebor has been criticized of over texturing, but, the you know, the texture on this Sarkasukas is absolutely fantastic. It feels so good in here. Nice and tactile feel to it. Here's a look at the hind legs, those toe claws. Also sport that like semi-translucent you know, plastic that the teeth have. It's an awesome, awesome touch. Then all the scoots, <clears throat> excuse me, on the back over here are nicely done. You got more of that dark pad and come in, in through all that dark brown. And I just love how fat it looks right here. Like when you're laying this figure down, uh, you can like really see the bulk of the animal because uh, such a heavy animal just it's spreading out on the ground like you see with modern crocodiles and alligators and then going down to the tail let's get the camera refocusing on everything nice thick powerful tail it tapers off to a nice paddle at the end now the tail is rubber and it does have a bendy wire in there but the tail is so thick you're not gonna get any movement right here you're gonna get at the end of the tail but however there is a problem you're just bending it you can get a nice curl at the end of the tail for a nice natural pose but because the paint and the gloss they use on here i'm immediately getting cracks on the tail right there so use that um you know bend of the tail at your own wrist you're eventually going to wear out your figure like that let's take a look at the other side now that's probably my biggest complaint about that just you know just the material use is really not the best to have a bendy wire in here it's going to mess up that beautiful paint job on this figure and let's take a look at probably my favorite thing for this figure. You know, Repor's second sauropod. At least the first ones were alive. Now we have this dead baby Nigosaurus. that has this very surprised look on its face. Uh, yeah, really wonderfully done. It is covered completely in a gloss coat to give that wet look because it probably just got plucked right from the water's edge. Uh, you have this really uh, gnarly gash right here with all nice gory details on the side. And same thing on the other side, you have all muscle tissue all exposed on here. And the whole thing is kind of like a brownish green coloration with just a little bit of a pattern on the tail. I love to see Rebor do a in-scale adult Nigosaurus to go with the Sarkasuchus. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. But I love this little accessory. And let's bring out the Sarkasuchus quick and plop our little victim in the mouth. Let's get the camera all readjusted for this fun little gruesome moment. You can just plop it in, just line up those cuts with the jaw and just close the mouth shut. And then you have a little victim being held in nice and tight there we go oh poor little baby son are you okay moving on with comparisons first up here it is with sarah harding she's a three and three quarter inch figure from the mattel jurassic world line three and three quarter inch figures are around 118 scale so it actually scales pretty good uh Re reborn sarkasuka so it gives you a good idea of how massive uh this animal was and next up let's do a couple rebar figures here it is with their stegosaurus which still remains one of my favorite stegosaurs in my collection absolutely love this thing when it first came out and now that with the camera all nice and adjusted here it is as it's getting stuck on my microphone cord here it is with rebor's magnificent t-rex kiss absolutely love that rex figure like it just shows rebor can do accurate stuff uh you know with the rex and this sarcosuchus and lastly for Rebar figures, here it is, with probably one of the best figures to come out this year as I'm like knocking my lights everywhere. Because this thing is another massive figure for them. Here it is with their Diplodocus. And I do this, I move everything out of frame. Uh, absolutely love this Diplodocus. I, I just hope Rebar does more seropods. It's nice to see companies taking chances, you know, like Holland Good and Rebar making large seropod figures because we got the money and we will buy these things. I just wish more company would notice that. And here's an Elrahaz formation group shot. That's the formation from uh, Niger, Africa, where Sarkasuchus is from. We have it with Safaris, now long retired. Uh, Nigrosaurus, Holland Goods, Oranosaurus, and PNSOs, Sukumimus. You know, like I said earlier, the scale of this thing is really out of whack. These are all, you know, around that 135 scale range. So, yeah, the Sarkasuchus is absolutely massive uh, compared to them. So, like I said, the Safari one is probably a good option. If you're looking for something a little bit more in scale with these uh, size figures. Now, scale is a big concern with you with this figure. Keep in mind, because it is around that 120, 122 scale, it actually scales pretty well 
with the Beast of the Mesozoic figures. They're all, you know, they, you know, they advertise as 118 scale, but, you know, some of them, you know, they kind of hover around that 115 to like 120 scale range. So it actually looks really good with the Beast of the Mesozoic figures. So, you know, if you have an issue with size and you collect these figures, the Sakasukas will actually fit in pretty well with them. So final thoughts on Rebor Sarkasukis. Uh, I absolutely love this day. It is has such a premium uh, feel to it. And it's only 60 bucks. It's a big figure. You know, it's over 17 inches long. It's nice and hefty. The paint job is so premium. Like I said, it feels like it should be on like a $200 uh, statue. It's just a really, really cool, impressive figure for your collection. Now, I think the you know my only two issues with it is uh, the cracking on the tail with that bendy joint in there. I just... Uh, I'm just probably not going to bend the tail on mine anymore because that's only like two or three bends I did on it. It's already starting to crack. So that is unfortunate. And the other thing is a lot of people have a problem with is the scale of it. You know, it's advertised at 135. It's around that 120-ish scale range. So it's, it's, it's big for a lot of people's collections. But, you know, if you have Beast of Mesozoic, it should fit in pretty nicely in there. Other than that, I think the thing is fantastic. You know, it's rare for me to pick up a non-dinosaur figure and review it on the channel. So Repo is definitely doing something right to get my money uh, for something like this. And since I like it so much, I'm probably definitely going to pick up at least one of their uh, Dinosuchus figures uh, and, you know, pose it with, you know, my T-Rex and stuff. Uh, so, like I said, begin review. Got mine from Big Bad Toy Store. Links down below in the description if you want to order one for yourself. And that will do it. I got a couple of Hammond Collection stuff I have to catch up on. Uh, there's new PNSO figures out there. Got a few reviews I need to catch up on in the next week or so. So stay tuned for all that. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on the channel, show your support by hitting the subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously. And it's greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.